Hi students, welcome to the Chem 300 and Year 11 Chemistry. This is Properties and Structures of Matter, the first module, and video number 8 on isotopes. In the last video, we just quickly reviewed atomic structure and got to that point where we were um, recalling the way we draw the atoms of different elements. Now we know that for all elements, the atom is defined by the number of protons. Hopefully, if you've made a senior chemistry course, you already understand that electrons are what are critically involved in chemical reactions, the exchange of electrons as they move from one atom to another, or sometimes as they're shared between atoms. So electrons can't define the actual atom. Now we know because of isotopes, and we've, we've started to look at the fact that isotopes exist based on the fact that an atom can have a different number of neutrons. So if there are three important particles in the nucleus and we have electrons, uh, protons, electrons orbiting and protons and neutrons in the nucleus and we know that electrons are not involved in defining the atom and we know now because of isotopes that neutrons can't be either, then it must be the proton number that defines the nucleus and in fact it does. So the atomic number is simply a number that represents the number of protons. So protons equals the atomic number, and this is what defines the atom. So how do we then define different isotopes? Well, we name isotopes similarly to the way that I showed you in the previous video. So um, we know that carbon is most common and stable as carbon-12. Um, so we would uh, write it this way, but we do know that there are other forms of carbon, carbon-13, for example, carbon-14. And there are more than one way, there is more than one way of writing this too. We can also, which we'll look at in a later uh, video, but I'll introduce for you quickly now. Um, if we use the symbol C for carbon, then the 6 represents the atomic number. And as I said, that's the defining component. But C12 would look like this, C13 would look like this, and perhaps I'll just um, make that last one C14 so they kind of link together a little bit more easily for you. Um, so this is how you would label them in order to identify different types of isotopes. As I mentioned before, instability is a different issue. Um, nuclei, atomic nuclei can be stable or unstable and their stability relates to a number of factors, one of which is the ratio of protons to neutrons. So let's explore this in a little more detail. The first thing that can happen is we can have too many neutrons to protons. Okay, so roughly the ratio up to, from atomic number, um, not greater than, um, less than or equal to 20, the ratio of neutrons to protons is around about one to one, and that's for stability. As they increase over 20, this neutron to proton ratio increases to uh, reach about 1.5 to 1. And so it's, it's a bit of an inexact science in terms of guessing from the numbers, um, but we certainly can tell from the way that the particle, that the particular nuclei are behaving. And if they're emitting radioactive particles, then clearly they are unstable and uh, radioisotopes. So one of the things that can happen is that we have too many neutrons. In this case, a neutron is usually going to turn into a proton and electron. And we'll have a look at how that happens um, a little bit later on. Um, if there are too many protons, so if that ratio is too high from the proton side rather than the neutron side, which it is for something like sodium-22, then one of the protons is going to be converted into a neutron. Uh, this requires a positron, which is kind of like uh, a positive electron. And yes, I know that doesn't make sense, um, but hopefully it will a little bit later as we go through this. Sometimes the nuclei are too heavy, and really once we get past uh, lead, anything that's bigger than about lead, so bismuth onwards, um, is just too heavy. And pretty much every one of these um, atoms is radioactive. They're all too big. Um, sometimes there's too much energy, and so as a result of that, um, some energy is released. This is in the form of gamma radiation. If they're too heavy, we get alpha radiation. 
The electron is a form of beta radiation and the positron is a beta positive. And we'll look at all of these in a little more detail later on. I'm not going to spend very much time in the zone of stability because I want you to look at this and to see if you can figure out, and we'll talk about this in class, how this particular graph helps us to make predictions about the stability of atoms. Thanks for watching.